Welcome back to another episode of Plug and Police. Today we'll be reviewing Digitalis. I'm your host Weaver Beats, and let's get into it. Digitalis is a multi-effect digital degradation and glitch tool. Inspired by bad converters, unearthed CDs, weak internet connections, and catastrophic errors, Digitalis is your personal vehicle through an endless digital wasteland. It has spectral filtering, a pitch section, telecommunication section, decimate section, bit crushing, bit rot, repeater, pitch shift, rhythm glitch. It's got a sequencer in it. It's got an advanced AI assistant named John. Nice to meet you, John. And it's got 98 presets for Windows 10 or later, Mac OS 10.12 Sierra. And it comes in VST3 or AAX or AU for 64 bit, obviously. You can get this plugin for $20. It has a free trial, and the trial features a random dropout of audio, and, and you can't save custom patches, which I think is a pretty good way to do trials, in my opinion. Okay, so I'm gonna be showing you guys what Digitalis can do real quick. I feel like I need to show you guys demos of the plugins before I just give you guys my opinions on them, because I feel like it'd help if you guys can see in action what these things do, you know? So we got this loop here, here's how it is dry. Okay, sounds pretty cool. Try to not pick anything super messy sounding or too processed sounding. We're gonna start off with a preset here. Really helps get like a vaporwave sort of vibe maybe. I like the psychedelic one a lot. Really got, it's got like some phaser or something going on. As you can see, it does a lot of interesting stuff. So as you can see, it's really good for changing the tone or just making the sound sound more weird. You can also just completely change the sound too with some of the, some specific settings in here. Hopefully that gives you an idea of sort of what this thing is capable of. I only cycled through a few different presets and I didn't really mess with too many of the settings, but there's a lot of different settings here. This tool just like provides so many different tones and sounds that I really would have struggled to get before. Yeah, so hopefully that gives you guys an idea of what this thing sounds like. Let's go check out some finished beats I made now. So pretty much all of these are melody loops and then I use Digitalis on the melodies. This first one I remember using a preset and adjusting the mix knob to really just change the tone of it. I like how this one had an Aphex Twin vibe to it. I feel like Digitalis helped accent that sound to it. So this one's actually my favorite out of all the beats I made with this. And I'm gonna upload this one to my Type Beat channel, which I'll link in the description if anyone's interested in that. I used it to change the tone and morph the sounds a bit here. And in this last one, I also used it to change the tone. I also used LFO tool. So first off, I think it's a very interesting concept. I don't think a lot of people have really explored doing digital degradation and this sort of glitching. I think people mostly focus on the most musical way to do glitching and not really creating a realistic version of damaged digital or glitched sounds and then trying to make it musical. I feel like this one goes with that approach, which is um, which gives it a different flavor. I like how they have specific settings within some of the modules to help you get more control of the sound and use it in your music. The UI is really cool. I like how you can rearrange the windows within it. I didn't expect you could do that until I did it on accident earlier. I like the general vibe of it, very retro future. The really useful thing about this tool to me is how you can change the tone and delivery of a sound. Uh, if you combine this with something like ShaperBox or LFO tool, then you've got something pretty overpowered in my opinion. And if you also combine this with another multi-effects tool, 
And you you also got something really overpowered. I love the little cat. I like that he's named John. That's a great name for a cat. I do have some questions though. Why does this cat know so much? And how can I speak to him in real life? Now this plugin doesn't have an insane amount of presets. It's got about 98, which is a moderate amount. I think it's sufficient for the price you pay. I like how the presets are divided by type. It does make you feel like you have less than you really do though, but it also helps you find the things you're looking for a lot quicker. Now this company is pretty much doing everything right in my opinion, Aberrant DSP. I mean, as far as like a indie company, I mean, if you, I guess you would call these guys an indie company, right? Now the product is really solid in my opinion. Uh, it's very unique. It, they have a really good video. The video was actually the thing that drew me into this originally. If they didn't have such a nice presentation of the plugin and the idea, then I probably wouldn't have been hooked into it in the first place. So I recommend you guys go watching that if you haven't. Even if you don't plan to buy it, I just think it was a really cool video. The plugin is stable. They're providing something a bit different from other brands. The price is pretty appropriate too. I, I think $20 is kind of a steal for this. I feel like a lot of companies would probably try to charge at least 50 to 100 for this. And in which case, like, I don't, it's not that it wouldn't be worth it at that price. I just feel like you're not getting that good of a deal. I think $20 is like a really good deal for this. So while I do love this plugin, I do think there are a few ways that can be improved a bit. Uh, the main one being, I think they could find a way to double down more on making it more musical. I'm not exactly sure how at the moment because it feels like they've made some adjustments to make it work musically in a few ways already. Uh, I just can't really put my finger on it, but I feel like they could lean a little more into the digital degradation thing while keeping it musical. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's missing, but I do feel like it could go a little further. I feel like this idea could go a little further. That's really what I'm trying to get at here because I feel like they're onto something and I think they should keep digging down this hole. That's that's what I'm saying. Like for instance, I think the glitching is not really the easiest thing to use in this plugin. Although there are some cool features with the glitching, it's really hard for me to use it in a musical context without some sort of automation or something or LFO tool or shaper box, you know, just to get more rhythmic control of it or have it turn on and off and stuff like that, you know. I give Digitalis an eight out of 10. Definitely one of the most interesting plugins of the year so far. I don't know if it's beating out Playbox in terms of uh, how interesting it is or how different it is, but it's pretty different for sure. Definitely caught me off guard on this. I actually saw it on Twitter in like a video and I saw a few people I know like it. And I don't know, for some reason I just, I was like, I gotta see what this is at the very least. And then, you know, I just went down the path. Next thing you know, I'm reviewing it. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, dislike if you disliked it. Make sure to check out my other videos if you haven't. I upload Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and every other day I upload shorts and I stream on Tuesday, Thursday on Twitch twitch.tv slash Weaver Beats. Make sure to check out bloom-audio.com for a great mixing and mastering service. I know this because I am them. Use code Weaver for 20% off. I'm going to go do some drugs. Just kidding. I'm going to go do some digitalis and some drugs. I give this plugin a 10 out of 10. Why? Cat. And go subscribe to Weaver Beats. Incorporated.